In the next scene, we see Yu Ling walking Yi Tian home. Our boy told the girl that he never expected her to become a grandmaster so quickly. Yu Ling revealed to our boy that she was fortunate enough to use natural treasures that her family had to break through. Yi Tian was surprised to hear this. He could not believe that Yu Ling actually managed to overtake him. With a smile on her face, our girl assured Yi Tian that he can also reach the next level. Although Yu Ling was able to use the Yu family resources, which are very large, our boy knew that the real reason Yu Ling was able to advance to the next level is because of her talent. Yi Tian realized that the Demon Sea base has countless experts around. He understood that he needed to quickly improve his overall strength if he wants to establish himself in the base. While our boy was thinking, Little Purple raised her head out of the hood and told her master that she is hungry. She asked Yi Tian if they can have barbecue meat. Yi Tian was shocked to see that the mouse came out of his clothes. He asked her to quickly go back in. Yu Ling saw Purple's head when she came out of the hood. She moved close to our boy and asked him if he is holding a treasure hunting mouse. Yi Tian was surprised to see that Yu Ling recognized his pet. He asked her if Purple is a famous spirit beast. Our girl was surprised to hear Yi Tian's question. She explained to him that the treasure hunting mouse is not just famous. It is also priceless and difficult to obtain even with a lot of money. Yu Ling told our boy that he does not need to go to the Marshall Pavilion to sell his pet. She asked Yi Tian to sell Purple to her right now. Purple was horrified to hear what Yu Ling said. She began to beg her master not to sell her, with a smile on his face. Yi Tian explained to Yu Ling that Purple is already his spiritual pet. He told her that he could not sell Purple to her. Yu Ling was disappointed to hear this, of course. She completely understood why our boy would not want to sell the beast. She knew how valuable Purple was. When they arrived at his building, Yu Ling explained to our boy that Yi Yu lives at the top floor. Yi Tian asked the girl to join him upstairs so she can greet his sister. Yu Ling explained to our boy that it has been a while since he saw his sister. She told Yi Tian that she does not want to disturb a sibling reunion. She assured our boy that she will visit another time. Before leaving, our girl told Yi Tian that she would send someone to bring him to the Marshall Pavilion's headquarters tomorrow. She told him that he can sell all his good items to them. She assured him that she would give him a good membership price for his item. Our boy thanked the girl for her offer. After saying what she wanted to say, Yu Ling left, the scene shifts, and we see Yi Tian knocking on his apartment door. He told his sister that he has returned. When Yu Ling opened the door, she was shocked to see the person in front of her. With a smile on his face, Yi Tian asked his sister if she has been living well. The girl became angry when she heard this. She slammed the door on her brother. Yi Tian was shocked to see this. He began to bang on the door and begged his sister to let him in. He reminded her that he is her older brother. While sitting on the other side of the door, Yi told her brother that he is very smart for remembering that he has a sister. She reminded Yi Tian that he left immediately they arrived in the Demon Sea base in order to go to the secret realm. She asked our boy if he knows how she has been living. She asked her brother if he knows how scary it is to live alone in a place where she does not know anyone. While banging on the door, our boy apologized to his sister. He begged her to first let him in. Yi became more annoyed when she heard his apology. She asked her brother to stay outside forever. Upon seeing that his sister had no interest in letting him in, our boy activated his spatial talent and teleported into the house. The moment he arrived into the house, he greeted Yi Yu with a smile. The girl freaked out when she saw her brother suddenly appear in the room. She asked him to tell her how he was able to get inside. Yi Tian revealed to his sister that he got the new ability in the secret realm. Yi was surprised to hear this. She asked our boy if his spatial talent allows him to walk through walls. Yi Tian smiled when he heard this. He was quite happy that he got such a useful ability. Our boy took out purple and told his sister that he got her a present. Yi was surprised to see the mouse. She had never seen such a unique looking mouse. She asked her brother for the beast's name. Our boy shared his pet's name with his sister and told her about purple's ability. With a smile on her face, Yi Yu grabbed purple and asked her brother if she is really so amazing. Yi Tian was surprised to see how easy it is to cheer up his sister. While he was looking at his sister, something taps him on the leg. When Yi Tian looked down, our boy was surprised to see what tapped him. He saw a fat little jean next to him. Yi Tian asked his sister to tell him when they started raising a pig. Yi Yu moved close to Jean and told her brother that it is his pet. Our boy was shocked to see this. He could not believe that he was looking at Jean. Through telepathy, Little Jean told her master that he is too mean. She explained to him that she is a bit plump because she has been eating a little more. She assured her master that she is not yet as fat as a pig. 
Yi Tian could not believe what he was hearing. He wondered about how his spiritual beast was going to fight in future if she is already fat. Jean moved close to Purple and welcomed her into the house. She told Purple that she will become her subordinate. She asked the mouse to refer to her as boss. Little Purple trembled in front of Jean. She immediately referred to her as boss. The scene shifts and we see Yi Tian taking a bath. After taking his bath, our boy got a towel and went into his bedroom. While sitting on his bed, Yi Tian took out his status window. He decided that it was time for him to copy the treasure hunting talent. The system asked Yi Tian if he wants to copy the talent. Our boy accepted this offer. Now Yi Tian had nine different talents. At the Yun family mansion, we see Yun Yi smash his cup on the ground after hearing the news. Yun Yi could not believe that Yun Feng failed her mission and still had the courage to return home to report of her failure. While trembling on the ground, Yun Feng revealed to her ancestor that she was tricked. She told him that the thief stole the Vitality Core while she was fighting against a powerful monster. She explained to him that the thief stole everything. Yun Yi asked the girl if she saw the face of the thief. Yun Feng explained to her ancestor that the thief was too fast. She told him that she did not even get to clash with Yi Tian. She explained to the man that she was only able to see the aftermath and the traces of the vitality stones that have been completely mined. Yuni became more enraged when he heard this. He could not believe that the girl did not even see the face of the thief. Yin Feng begged her ancestor to forgive her. King Yuni grabbed the girl's head and moved close to her, with a horrifying smile on his face. Yuni told Yin Feng that she should be ashamed that she calls herself the number one genius talent of the Demon Sea base after bringing back such a terrible result. He could not believe that Yun Feng was tricked and she could not get the identity of the thief. He asked the girl to give him a reason why he should allow her to live. While trembling, Yun Feng begged her ancestor to give her another chance. She assured him that she would find the vitality core and bring it back to him. Yun He threw the girl to the ground when he heard this. He revealed to Yun Feng that the thief must be from one of the major families. He believed that only the major families would have the courage to steal from his family. He asked Yun Feng to start investigating the members which the noble family sent into the secret realm. Before leaving the room, King Yun, he turned to the girl and reminded her to never forget the consequences for failure. After saying this, he turned around and walked forward. Yun Feng bowed her head and told the man that she understands. After the man left, Yun Feng clenched her fist out of anger. She promised herself that she would find the thief. The scene shifts and we see Yi Tian arrive at the Marshall Pavilion's headquarters. Our boy was surprised to see how huge the building is. Yi Tian got a brand new haircut and some brand new clothes. He told Yu Ling that the building is quite grand. Our girl told our boy that he does not need to be so surprised. Yi Tian was happy that he came to the Marshall Pavilion. He was curious to see how Little Purple's treasure hunting talent works. Yu Ling took our boy to the Marshall Pavilion's VIP room. When Yi Tian stepped inside, he was shocked to see so many treasures. While looking around, our boy noticed that the treasures had different colors on them. Yu Ling told Yi Tian that he can try out any of the treasures. Most of the treasures in the room were all colored blue. Our boy noticed that some of the items were not in good shapes. The treasure hunting talent ranks the value of items by colors. Low rank treasures are white. Mid tier treasures are blue. High tier treasures are purple. Apex tier treasures are red and transcendent tier treasures are gold. Yi Tian grabbed a mid tier blade to see how good it was. To his surprise, the blade cracked easily. Our boy could not believe what he was seeing. He decided to quickly put the blade back before anyone notices. While our boy was trying to perfectly position the blade, someone comes to greet him. The person asked him if he is Yu Ling's friend. Our girl walked up to the person who turns out to be Elder Ben. Yu Ling introduced Yi Tian to Elder Ben. She told him that the man is in charge of the Marshall Pavilion. Our boy greeted the man. Elder Ben asked Yi Tian to look around. He told him that he will give him a discount on any item he chooses. The moment he said this, our boy sensed something unique. When he looked up, he saw a huge egg radiating a gold aura. Yi Tian could not believe that he was looking at a transcendent tier treasure. The egg belongs to the heavenly warrior blood dragon species. Its bloodline talent is unknown. Its strength is unknown. Its flight talent is unknown. Its speed talent unknown and its defense talent is unknown. While Yi Tian was staring at the egg, Yu Ling tapped him on the shoulder. She asked him if he is alright. She asked our boy to tell her why he is spacing out. Yi Tian apologized to her. He told her that he was lost in his thoughts again. Our girl could not believe that our boy was actually distracted. 
She asked him to tell Elder Ben anything he wants. She asked him to talk quickly because Elder Ben is very busy. Yi Tian told the Elder that he is surrounded by low-ranked items. He told the man that he wants to see some good treasures. He assured the Elder that he does not lack money. Elder Ben laughed when he heard this. He told our boy that he has a lot of guts. Yu Ling was surprised to hear what our boy said. She believed that Yi Tian was putting on a facade to bluff the Elder. The man explained to Yi Tian that their store has natural treasures, cultivation techniques, transcendent divine weapons, and any other items. He assured our boy that he will be able to help him obtain any item as long as he can fork out the money. Yi Tian was surprised to hear this. He took out a small vitality stone and asked the elder if he can pay with the item. Elder Ben and Yu Ling were shocked to see the vitality stone. The elder had never seen a vitality stone that was so large. Yu Ling could not believe that our boy had a vitality stone. She asked him to tell her where he got the stone from. Yi Tian smiled and told our girl that he was lucky enough to pick the item in the secret realm. Elder Ben politely asked our boy to give him the details of what he needs. He told Yi Tian that he will retrieve the item from their storage. He assured our boy that he will get him the best item. Our boy explained to the man that he needs a cultivation technique that will allow him to cultivate till he reaches the Grandmaster Realm. He asked him to also get him a weapon that is similar to a short sword. Elder Ben assured our boy that he can get the items for him. With a greedy look in his eyes, the man told Yi Tian that the Vitality Stone is enough to pay for everything. He asked our boy to wait for him. While walking like a kid who just received a present, the man thanked God that he was able to get a Vitality Stone. Yi Tian could not believe that such a small piece of Vitality Stone is worth so much money. He became certain that the Vitality Core must be a priceless treasure. While our boy was looking around, Yuling walked up to him. Our girl asked Yi Tian to tell her where he got the Vitality Stone. She did not believe Yi Tian's lie of finding the stone on the ground. She told our boy that the item is not something that can be randomly found on the ground. Our boy told the girl that she will be placed in a dangerous and difficult position if she hears the truth. Yu Ling was annoyed to see that Yi Tian was warning her. She asked him to tell her the truth. Yi Tian turned around and told the girl that he stole the Vitality Stone from the Yun family. Yu Ling was shocked to hear this. She grabbed our boy's clothes and asked him if he is crazy. She reminded him that the Yun family has been searching for the item for a long time. She asked Yi Tian to tell her the amount of Vitality Stones that he took. She asked him if he only took one stone. She told him that he can still be safe if he returns the stone. Our boy told her that he did not count it because he took the entire mine. Yu Ling screamed when she heard this. Our girl sat on the floor and grabbed her hair. She realized that she is screwed. She knew that the Yin family will trace it back to them once they investigate. While looking around, Yi Tian told our girl that she does not need to be worried. He assured her that he took care of everything. Yu Ling snapped when she heard this. She asked our boy if he knows how terrifying King Yunhee's methods are. She explained to him that they cannot afford to offend someone like Yunhee. Our girl decided to give up. She asked Yi Tian to not blame her if something happens to him. After walking around for a while, our boy found the egg. The scene shifts and we see Elder Ben presenting some items to Yi Tian. The Elder took out a scroll and a short sword. The scroll is known as the Purple Cloud Body Refining Technique and the sword is known as the Amethyst Knife. The man revealed to our boy that the items are rumored to have been found by a King Rank expert. The expert found the items in a grave, so they are extremely rare and precious. Elder Ben asked Yi Tian if he is satisfied with the items. When our boy picked up the short sword, he noticed that it had a red color meaning that it is an apex tier treasure. Upon seeing the color, Yi Tian realized that a King Rank expert actually used the item. Our boy decided to put the items into a storage pouch. After receiving his items, Elder Ben gave Yi Tian a card. The man explained to our boy that the excess money from exchanging the Vitality Stone has been stored in the card. He told Yi Tian that the card is a VIP card. He told him that he can freely enter the Marshall Pavilion with the card. Our boy could not believe that there was still excess money left from the stone. With a smile on his face, Elder Ben revealed to Yi Tian that the card is very special. He told him that he can get a 70% discount with the card anywhere. After receiving the card, our boy pointed at the egg and asked the elder to tell him the price of the egg. The man decided to take a look at the item. When he took the item from the shelf, Yi Tian told the man that he wants the egg. He asked him to give him a price. To our boy's surprise, Elder Ben told him that he will give him the item for free. Yi Tian did not understand what was happening. The man explained to Yi Tian that he gave him the egg to make friends with him. 
He asked our boy to bring more treasures like the Vitality Stone to the Marshall Pavilion in the future. Yi Tian could not comprehend what was happening. He could not believe that Elder Ben is actually giving him a transcendent tier treasure for free. He wondered if the man did not know the value of the item. Yu Ling revealed to our boy that he is holding a fossilized dragon egg. Yi Tian was surprised to hear that he was holding a dragon's egg. According to our girl, the treasure was sold to them by an unknown martial artist. She told Yi Tian that they have tried different methods to hatch the egg, but they were never successful. Yu Ling explained to our boy that they were cheated by the martial artist and received a defective item. Yi Tian could not believe that the martial pavilion did not know the value of the item. Our boy knew that he was holding the most valuable treasure in the building. He decided to try to hatch the egg by himself. The scene shifts and we see Yi Tian walking next to Yu Ling after they left the martial pavilion. Our boy thanked Yu Ling for helping him get some good items. He asked our girl to come to his house. He told her that he wants to treat her to dinner. He assured her that Yi Yu's cooking is quite good. Yu Ling told our boy that she is fine. She told him that she still has to return to her family for other things. Yi Tian told our girl that he and his sister will be permanently staying in the base. He told her that they might disturb her to help them with a lot of things. With a smile on her face, Yu Ling assured our boy that she is willing to help. She reminded him that they are friends. Upon hearing her response, Yi Tian told the girl that she can come to him for help anytime. While they were talking, a fat idiot interrupted them. Yu Chao was annoyed to see that our boy survived and managed to return back. With an arrogant look on his face, the idiot asked our boy if he acted like a sneaky bastard while he was in the secret realm. He asked him if he gathered some useless items and tried to exchange it with the Marshall Pavilion in order to get some money for himself. Yu Ling was annoyed to hear this. She could not believe that Yu Chao was speaking rudely to her friend. She asked Yu Chao to watch his mouth. She told him that Yi Tian is a guest of the Marshall Pavilion. The idiot told Yu Ling that he was simply joking with our boy. Our girl asked the idiot to return to their family if he has nothing else to do. She told him that he is not allowed to cause trouble there. Yu Chao ignored Yu Ling's words and rushed to attack Yi Tian. He told our girl that he will go home once he gives our boy a proper greeting. The idiot clenched his fist and tried to attack Yi Tian. Our boy was not phased by the man coming at him. He simply blocked the idiot's attack with his defense talent. Yu Chao was shocked to see that Yi Tian had a defense talent. Our boy decided to show the idiot the difference between them. He let out a portion of his energy. His energy made the idiot freeze in fear, with a horrifying look on his face. Yi Tian asked Yu Chao if he really wants to die. Our boy's energy took the shape of a giant red skull. His aura was so deadly that Yu Chao could only tremble in fear. He knew that he was going to die. Before Yi Tian could do anything, Yu Ling appeared in front of him. She asked him to not do anything. She reminded him that he is at the main entrance of the Marshall Pavilion's headquarters. Upon hearing Yu Ling's opinion, Yi Tian decided to calm down. He took away his energy. Our girl turned to Yu Chao and asked him to not do anything. Of course, the idiot never planned on doing anything. He could only tremble in fear. Our boy turned around and told Yu Ling that he is going home. Our girl could only apologize to Yi Tian as he walked forward. After Yi Tian left, Yu Ling walked up to Yu Chao. She asked the idiot to tell her why he was trying to cause trouble for her friend. Before he could reply, Yu Chao fell to his knees. Yu Ling was shocked to see this. With a look of fear on his face, the man asked Yu Ling to tell her the amount of monsters Yi Tian has killed. He could not believe that a person could actually have such a strong murderous aura. The scene shifts and we see Yi Tian arrive at his building. When our boy stepped into his house, he saw his sister cooking. Yu Ling asked her brother to give her some minutes. She told him that she is almost done cooking. Our boy was happy to see that his sister was cooking. It had been a while since he had her food. He told Yu Yu that he was going to finally have a good dinner. Yu Yu told her brother that he can wait until dinner is done. Yi Tian sat on a chair and rested his back. He said that home is the best place to be at. He could not believe how comfortable he was. When he looked next to him, he saw Jean and Purple sleeping next to each other. He was surprised to see how relaxed the beasts were. Our boy took out the dragon's egg from his storage pouch. He decided to keep the egg in a safe place for the time being. He believed that he could not find a way to hatch the egg since even the Yu family could not uncover more about the egg over the years. While he was thinking, our boy saw something shocking. The dragon egg was shaking in his hand. Hi guys, I completely understand that you love your talent as mine. However, I do not have enough chapters to make more videos. I promise to release an episode when I get more chapters. 
While you wait for more episodes, you can check out another recap that I just started for the owners of your talent is mine. This manhwa is called Assassin in Another World. It is a unique manhwa that I plan to release more episode of. Link to the recap is in the comment section and description box. Hope you guys enjoy it.